Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger share several similarities. They have a shared colonial past and are currently under military rule, facing isolation due to recent coups. As a result, these countries have come together to form the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. The AES aims to establish a united federation in both political and monetary aspects. This raises the question of whether a new African country is being created. In this video, we will delve into the reasons behind this alliance, explore the current situation in these countries and assess the feasibility of their collective efforts. The Sahel region has become a hotbed of insecurity, plagued by notorious groups like Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. This ongoing conflict has not only resulted in a significant decline in security, but has also paved the way for a series of political upheavals that have shaken the region's governance. Since 2020, Mali and Burkina Faso have each experienced two coups, while Niger had its own in July 2023. The common driving force behind these coups is the urgent need to address the escalating insecurity gripping the Sahel. Frustrated by their government's perceived failures in effectively combating armed Islamist groups, the ruling juntas in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger have resorted to drastic measures. In Burkina Faso, under the leadership of Ibrahim Traore following a coup, tens of thousands of civilians have been enlisted to strengthen the country's defense against these extremist groups. This unconventional approach emphasizes the gravity of the security challenges faced by Burkina Faso and the imperative for innovative strategies to counter the insurgency. Niger, under the leadership of Abdurrahman Etiani after the 2023 coup, also took a bold step by terminating the country's long-standing security agreement with the European Union. The expulsion of French troops, as well as the termination of international security agreements, stems from the belief that these foreign forces have been ineffective in combating the jihadist threat. Sahel nations are increasingly recognizing the need to assume greater control over their own security. In Mali, Colonel Asimi Goita and his government have called for the departure of the UN peacekeeping mission, citing its perceived ineffectiveness in addressing jihadist activities. This marks a significant shift in strategy. The official end of the UN mission in Mali on December 11, 2023, demonstrates the junta's determination to take charge of the ongoing security crisis. In September 2023, the Liptako Gorma Charter was established, marking a significant milestone in regional cooperation and unity. This agreement binds the signatories to provide military assistance to each other in the event of external threats. Any attack on the sovereignty and territorial integrity of one or more parties will be considered an aggression against all, triggering a duty of assistance that may include the use of armed force to restore and ensure security. Furthermore, the Liptako Gulma Charter emphasizes the shared understanding that the rise of Islamist insurgents, such as Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, poses a severe threat to the stability of the region. Beyond defense against external aggression, the pact also commits the three nations to collaborative efforts in preventing or resolving armed rebellions sparked by these insurgent groups. In doing so, the signatories acknowledge the interconnected nature of their security challenges and affirm their collective responsibility to address the underlying causes of instability. A shift away from individual approaches is highlighted emphasizing the significance of a united approach to addressing the intricate security situation in the Sahel region. Additionally, in response to the challenges of international isolation after military coups in Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso, the three nations have strategically united to establish an alliance founded on the pressing need for legitimacy. 
With all three countries now under military juntas, the pursuit of legitimacy has become a vital shared objective due to a mutual understanding of the consequences of isolation following coups, including punitive actions like aid reductions and suspensions from regional groups. Immediately after the coups, ECO was suspended all three nations from the sub-regional bloc. Furthermore, coups often lead to international isolation, with countries and organizations reluctant to engage with nations experiencing political upheaval. Consequently, Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso have endeavored to collectively demonstrate that they are not isolated entities. Through the formation of this alliance, the military-led governments aim to present a cohesive front to the global community, signaling their dedication to seeking recognition as legitimate actors on the world stage. The three nations have come together in a strategic alliance, driven by a common dissatisfaction with France's long-standing influence in the region. Feeling disillusioned, they have taken steps to distance themselves, such as withdrawing from the G5 Sahel Joint Force, which they believe is controlled by France and ineffective in achieving its promised results. Notably, these countries are now expressing a desire to seek support from Russia, a departure from their historical ties with France. With the reported presence of Wagner, a Russian private military company, in Mali, and the warm reception of Russian officials in all three nations, it is clear that Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso are collectively shifting their focus towards Moscow. This strategic realignment reflects their shared vision of breaking free from traditional alliances and seeking alternative partnerships to address the challenges of insurgency and regional security. However, the absence of a functional air force in any of these nations poses a significant obstacle, limiting their ability to effectively combat insurgent activities. Even France, despite its considerable resources, has struggled to make a substantial difference in the fight against insurgents in the area, casting doubt on the effectiveness of a regional alliance. Moreover, while the alliance may demonstrate that these countries are not isolated, Experts believe that it may not fully establish the desired legitimacy and acceptance on the global stage. From an economic perspective, the alliance could potentially influence ECOWAS to lift sanctions, granting access to aid and resources. However, the conditions set by ECOWAS for lifting sanctions, such as a genuine commitment to transitioning to civilian rule, have not yet been met. Although plans for a common stabilization fund, investment bank and monetary union have been announced, the absence of concrete plans raises doubts about their economic viability. France exerts control over a colonial currency used in its former African colonies. These countries are required to keep half of their foreign exchange reserves in the French treasury and are subject to borrowing limitations. In order to access their own funds, they must borrow from France. While the actual establishment of a monetary union is uncertain, these economic initiatives serve as a powerful expression of their dissatisfaction with the current financial arrangements imposed by France. Do you think this move will yield a positive change for this region? Feel free to share your thoughts on this matter with us in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more enlightening and educational videos about the African continent. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.